Hi, my name is Sudi. I'm a Roblox game developer and also a Roblox content creator on YouTube. If you watch Roblox Game Dev on YouTube, you might already know me. I go by Mango Dev and I make Roblox game development videos. And if you don't already know me, make sure to go subscribe to my channel. It is called Mango Dev. So when I first started learning Roblox to do game development, I didn't really know where to start, so it took me quite long to actually learn, and also my learning was also quite messy. So that is why I've partnered up with Bright Champs to create a Roblox tutorial series, where you'll be learning everything from beginner to like, you know, quite advanced level, so that you guys have a good foundation in learning Roblox Studio. So in this video, you guys are going to be learning how to download Roblox Studio, creating a new game, learning the Roblox Studio interface, learning the workspace, and also working with a part and its properties in the game. So anyways, let's get started. So to start off, you obviously need to download Roblox Studio first. And to do that, you can go to roblox.com slash create, or you can search up Roblox Studio download and go to the first link and you'll be redirected here. And you can just press start creating and I'll prompt you to download Roblox Studio, but I already have it downloaded, so I do not need to re-download it. So once you open up Roblox Studio for the first time, you'll be greeted with this page over here and you can just press base play over here and this will give you like a flat new world for you to do anything in and create your first game so starting off i want you guys to actually get familiar with the roblox studio interface because this can be pretty pretty like confusing and it was for me when i first did it so the basic things you need to know is over here is on top over here is home and this pretty much has everything you'd like use on a regular basis and we'll get into these buttons in a second when you go to model over here, this is everything you'll ever need for modeling and also a bit of scripting over here, but you'll have everything you'll need for modeling. For example, you know, instancing a part, um, scaling it up, moving it, rotating it and stuff like that, but we'll get into it in a second. Then when you go to test over here, you know, you can press play to actually try out your game. You can start a local server. You can look, it, look through it through, you know, different devices and we'll also get into that later on then when you press view this place is really important because you know when you first open up roblox studio you might not have all these tabs that i have and it might just look for you like like completely just like this and what you want to do these are the three things that i recommend you have on your screen press the explorer because you'll really need it this is this contains everything in the game press on the properties this way the properties of everything in the game and also press on output this will give you you know any errors or anything on the script and the rest you don't really need for now but when you need them i will make sure to you know have a detailed explanation for what for what everything does then in the plugins tab you'll have nothing over here you'll probably just have these two icons but um we'll get into plugins also later on but you don't need them for now so now as you know the ui of roblox i want to teach you like what this area is you know what what is everything over here it might be a bit overwhelming there's not really anything right now but this area where you can see everything is called the workspace and on the explorer on the top right you can see if you expand this you'll have four things you'll have the base plate you'll have the spawn location you have terrain and you'll have camera so the base plate is this gigantic thing over here you can see um i just zoomed out quite a lot what you can see over here is this gigantic thing. Most of the time, you'll never need it, so you can delete it if you want, but we're going to keep it for now. The spawn location is a location where your character will spawn. It's pretty self-explanatory. The camera is your player's camera, and the terrain is like when you work with terrains and stuff, it will save under this. So how do you actually have stuff in this workspace area? So what you can do is on the top, you can press model and you can press this thing where it says part and you'll be greeted with a part like this now if you go to the top left you'll see these four really important things first one is select this will allow you to select anything in the workspace so like you know i can select and move it around like this but if you want to be a bit more precise with your movements you can press the move tool and this will allow you to move it on the x you know the y axis the z axis so you can move it anywhere you want then when you press the scale this will allow you to actually scale up the objects so for example you know you can scale it in any axis i want for example like this then when you press rotate you'll be able to actually you know pretty self-explanatory you'll be able to rotate the item like this now let's say you wanted to rotate your item but right now it's only for example moving at 90 degrees and you want to rotate it like 45 degrees what would you do 
you come up to where it says snap to grid and here you can see rotate and move so you can change the rotate um, increment to 45 and this way you'll be able to rotate the 45 degrees like you can see here you can change it to whatever number you want you can change it to one degree and you can you know rotate it very precisely and for the move area you can change it to whatever you want for example if i want to move this object or i want to scale this object like very precisely right i can set it to like 0.1 and i can scale it very precisely and i can move it very precisely too or let's say i want to move it like you know make it very big i can set this to 10 and this way it will only resize in increments of 10 and any axis same goes for movement it will only move with increments of 10. right now as that is done i actually want to tell you guys the properties of this part now you might be asking what is properties on the left hand side or maybe it's on the right hand side for you there should be a tab called properties as i said before just press on these buttons if you don't have it you can go to the top press view press properties and you find this tab like this and when you select a part there will be a lot of overwhelming stuff like i have over here do not get overwhelmed because i'm going to be showing you everything that is here everything that is important and you guys need to know so starting off with brick color this is basically predetermined roblox colors that is there so let's say you know i want to make it i don't know brown i can make it brown i want to make it red i can make it red you know but these is this is not really that precise now if you go to just color if you go two down and you'll just you'll see just color you can be much more precise with your colors there's you know you can make it darker much more precise and there's also a lot of you know more customization that you can do over here there's a, more, a lot more values um if you go one above that you'll see cast shadow this is pretty self-explanatory if you have it enabled there'll be a shadow because you know there's a sun and all but if you don't have it enabled there'll be no shadow and it looks kind of trippy not gonna lie moving on there is material material is basically you know what material it is right now it doesn't look that great well, let's say I change it to, I don't know, brick. You can all of a sudden see it looks like bricks, right? Or I don't know, we can change it to anything that is over here. Let's say we change to wooden planks. You'll see that it looks like wooden planks. Now let's change it back to brick for a second. And you know, just for a good example, we can make it red. And now you can see it's like, you know, you could use this for a wall for an apartment or something like that. Material variant is not really that important because not a lot of the materials actually have good material variants, so you do not need to know that. Now, going down to reflectance and transparency. Transparency, pretty self forward. If you have it at one, um, you will not be able to see the actual part. It's still there, but you will not be able to see it. And you know, as you decrease it, you can see it more and more. Now reflectance, a good example would be if I had a glass material, right? Now you can see it's not reflecting anything, but if I have the reflectance up to like one, you can see that it's reflecting whatever is there. Like right now it's reflecting the sky. Um, and if you pair it up with like transparency, you can see, you can see through the glass and it's also reflecting the sky. So you can mimic, mimic real world situations. Now let's just go back to our brick over there. Now, this part where it says data, you don't need to pay attention to anything. It's not really that important for now. Moving on to transform. This is really important. The size tells you the size of the actual object in the X, Y, and Z values. The position does the same thing, but for position, the X, Y, and Z values relative to the world. The orientation does the same. This is actually its rotation. So you can see if I change the rotation, you can see the orientation changing. You don't need to pay attention to origin position and origin orientation for now. It is fine. And obviously, these are vector 3 values. If you don't know what vector 3s are, don't worry. I'll go through that later on. They're basically just X, Y, and Z values, but obviously more complicated than that. Then pivot, you don't need to pay attention to that for now. But then we'll go on to collision. So the can collide pro property is probably the most important over here. So what can collide means is basically if you can like collide with an object so i can set something up over here real quick so for one of them i'll have can collide on as you can see over here and the other one i will just take can collide off and i will give you a good example like this over here if you go to home or if you go to test you can just press play and this way you'll be able to load up in your game and actually test your game 
So once you're in, as you can see, my character looks handsome as always. So the left one has can collide value true. So as you can see, I can't actually go through the thing. Every time I try going to it, I actually, you know, bump into it. But on the right hand side, on the other hand, um, the can collide value is actually turned off. And that means that I can literally just go through the thing just like that. Just like magic. Magic. And this will be useful in many different situations um, that we'll come across later on. And if you want to, you know, go out of the game playing area, you can just press stop up over here. And this way you'll go back over here. Now you know what can collide is. Um, now going on to this area called anchored. Anchored is really important because it basically determines if your part um, has gravity acting on it. So for example, let me bring this part over here. So right now you can see that anchored, the anchored value is switched off. What this means is that if I just quickly run the game, you can see that the object starts to fall down. As you can see, the object falls down and gravity is acting upon it. But if I turn anchored on and I run it again, you can see that the thing just floats in air. It's like magic. No gravity is acting on it. So that is what it basically means. Going down, you can see there's massless. Massless pretty much just means if your object has mass or not. This would be important in, for example, if you have character clothing, you don't want the clothing to be slowing down your character. And that's pretty much it. If you guys didn't take notes, please make sure to take notes because that really helped me scripting. You know, you can refer back to the notes whenever you want. It's much easier. And yeah, now you should be experts. Now moving on to some other things in the Roblox UI. Let's say you don't want this part to be, uh, you know, you don't want to spawn a part that is just a block. You can come to the part area that I went showed before. You can go to model and you'll have part over here. You can press this over here, this down arrow, and you can actually spawn quite a lot of things. For example, you can press this, you can spawn a cylinder. You know, I can just rotate it up. If I want to, boom. Do whatever you want with it then you can spawn a wedge so it's like a triangle shaped thing like that you can spawn in a sphere like that so there's a ball you know it doesn't just have to be a part then there's other things like a corner wedge but you know you'll mainly probably be using a block and quite possibly and yeah that's it for this episode you guys are now probably masters at working with a part and its properties and also the Roblox Studio interface. Make sure to take notes and make sure to practice. And in the next episode, we are going to dive right into scripting. Yay, I know, that's fun. So yeah, if you're not subscribed to me already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at MangoDev and stay tuned for the next episode.